Share your love and creativity for baking. Bake more memories with tried and trusted Royal Baking Powder. Last Friday on the Tastemaster SA, it was a spicy affair as contestants teamed up in a relay challenge. Working in groups of four, their task was creating a plated dessert highlighting the art of adding spice. Zakele, Catherine, Tahila and Chapiso came out tops as a team, sending the rest of the contestants to the second elimination. Welcome back to the Tastemaster SA Kitchen and of course to your second elimination. Last week things got quite heated in the kitchen with the Relay Challenge. Some of you mastered the art of the use of spice in your baking and therefore you are safe. For the remaining six, today is your chance at redemption. For the six of you wearing aprons, one of you will be going home today. But there is a potential lifeline. Tahila and Zakele. You are both in possession of a Royal Baking Powder pin. Now this of course means that you can save yourself from elimination or you can save a friend. Hopefully the Royal Baking Powder pin will be used for me and it will help me. Hey, that Royal Baking Powder pin? Come on, hook a friend up man, come on. Today is actually the last opportunity to play your pin. So seeing as you're safe, my question is, will you be saving a friend? I don't think the Royal Baking Powder Pen is going to come my way because I think Zakele and Tahila are intimidated by my skills. Tahila, come and join us here in the front. If I do choose to save somebody, that could backfire on me later on if I thought they weren't competition, but they actually turn out to be competition. Tell us, will you be playing your pin today? I will be playing my pin today. Ooh. So who have you decided to save? Using my Royal Baking Powder Pen, I've decided to save Joshua. <laughs> I wanted to save somebody that's a close friend to me and that I don't really feel very threatened by. <laughs> Joshua, you can remove your apron and join the rest at the back. I'm so happy that I'm not in the elimination process again, so I'm safe for now. <laughs> Zakele, you're up. Please join us in the front. I have to think long and hard about this decision I'm about to make. It's not an easy one. Have you chosen to play your pin today? I have chosen to play my pin today. Mm hmm So who will you be saving? The person that I will be saving today is Senzo. <laughs> I have a shock. I can't believe it. He's calling my name like really. <laughs> I chose Senzo because he's Umkaya and I need an ally. Right, Senzo, you're safe. <laughs> you may join everybody Hello. else in the back row, the safe row. <laughs> Ooh, I'm feeling very happy. This is on Chabula Kulu. Good thing for elimination because we last challenge again about elimination manje and circle elimination. So it's a bula cool good. I made it. Shane, how do you feel about what just happened and not being saved? I'm okay with not being saved, but I'm I'm shaking, I'm nervous. <laughs> nerves are good, channel those nerves. Yes, yes. Derek, who fool you with your concert for now? I feel a bit benoit, as well yearly is. Here are three dames, is bitter talentful, baie sterk bakkers. Ek is my net a home cook. Ek weet nie. To the four of you remaining, today's theme is more than just a style of baking. It's an entire lifestyle. Over the past few years, there's been these progressive movements in conscious eating, and bakeries and eateries have proved time and time again that you don't need to sacrifice flavor and quality to be sustainable. One of those conscious movements we're focusing on today is 
vegan baking. Yay! It's a vegan baking challenge today. I am super, super excited. Ed definitely has an advantage in the vegan bake as she's been a vegan for five years. To help us along today, please help me welcome vegan cook, food stylist, photographer, and law lecturer at the University of Stellenbosch, Nondumiso Penyane. I like her content that she puts out. She's always got a smile on her face. Just such a warm, lovely person. Hello. <laughs> Hello contestants, it is such a pleasure to meet you today. I am extremely excited to share the world of vegan baking with you. And of course, I'm looking forward to seeing you at the Masterclass Kitchen, where I will be sharing my tips and tricks because with vegan baking, you don't have to compromise taste and flavor. And on that note, off you go to the Masterclass. I'm excited going into today's Masterclass. It's always fun to see somebody else's perspective on baking and how it's a science and how they manipulate the ingredients to make it work in different ways. And for you guys at home, don't forget, we're giving away 12 KitchenAid stand mixes, one every week. If you have a vegan bake that will blow our minds, bake it using royal baking powder, upload it onto socials using the hashtag TheTasteMasterSA, you could win one of your very own. We cannot wait to see your vegan bakes. Good luck. I'm hoping to learn a lot from today's masterclass because I know nothing about vegan baking. So anything Nondomiso says is going to be beneficial to me 100%. Welcome to the Vegan Baking Masterclass. The main purpose of this segment is for me to show you how to replace animal-based ingredients with vegan ingredients in a classic bake. So we are veganizing today a very common and delicious bake that we have here in South Africa, which is called the Herzogis. There are various binding agents that you could use as an alternative when you bake. So you want to pick your alternative as carefully as possible and consider the type of impact that you wanted to have in your final bake. We are going to be using applesauce today. One of the reasons why is because the recipe itself involves fruit. So it's fruity, you've got apricot, and it would be better to use something like apple sauce rather than macadamia butter or even cashew butter, which has a very strong, dense taste, which would then take over the flavor of the bake. The texture, the taste, the flavor, everything's affected when you replace an ingredient. I would like to learn how to substitute ingredients successfully to achieve the textures and flavors that you'd like. You would use butter typically to make the bake nice and tender and moist. So we are replacing regular butter with the coconut butter today. And there are various other alternatives that you could use. For example, you could use coconut oil, or you could look at using a nut butter. So as you know, there are quite a lot of nut butters that are available on the shelves right now. But of course, you always, always have to keep one thing in mind, and that is that whatever butter you choose is going to affect the flavor and texture of your bake. So I'm very surprised that there are so many substitutes for non-vegan things. You think that you have to substitute butter, so there must be one other ingredient that you substitute butter for, but there's so many, the options are endless. So to the bowl, I've already added some butter, some flour, and I'm going to now add some sugar, as well as some baking powder. One of the things that you have to keep in mind when you do vegan baking is that Vegan ingredients don't always behave in the same way as animal products do. And so you must prepare for the possibility that things may not go according to plan. So you have to be very flexible and versatile and be ready to do any problem solving should you need to. So now that we have our dough, it's nice and firm, we're going to start to divide it. And you want to roll it up a bit and press it into the baking pan. So now I'm going to simply add the apricot jam into the tray. The other thing that we are going to be replacing today is we are going to be replacing the egg white with aquafaba. Aquafaba is the liquid that you find in chickpeas. And so when you buy chickpeas, you can literally just separate out the liquid in the chickpeas and you could use it in your baking. And the reason for that is that if you whip it for long enough, it actually stiffens and starts to peak, much like an egg white does. Nondomiso is showing me that you can whip up aquafaba, which is the juice from chickpeas, and you can make it into a stiff, like egg white peak situation. You use a sauce and it doesn't make sense that it's gonna turn into a meringue. That's for me, it's very interesting. So you can see now this liquid that we just had has now turned into a meringue texture. Now, important to use some vanilla 
because the meringue obviously has the taste and even the smell of the chickpeas. So you want to use some vanilla to get rid of that smell and texture. Then I'm going to add some coconut. The coconut is obviously really important in this recipe because without the coconut, we don't have that nice crunchy topping. We want to then add these into the cups. I am learning like a child, like I've never baked before in my life. The most important thing I'm learning right now is how to work with the different ingredients that I'm not used to. Okay, so these are ready now. We're going to put them in the oven. It's really cool to learn something new like this and I think veganism is becoming such a popular thing, especially in Cape Town. So it's about time that I learn. In Masterclass, along with her Herzogis, Nundomiso had created a range of classic vegan bakes to inspire the contestants, including a plant-based citrus and thyme cake and a baked vanilla custard cake. Oh my gosh, that Herzogi that Nundomiso made us, that was just honestly heaven in a bite. I love a Herzogi and it did taste like a traditional Herzogi. I'd even go as far to say as this Herzogi, the vegan Herzogi, tastes better than a traditional one. Nondumiso has absolutely changed my mind when it regards to vegan baking. It is absolutely amazing. The techniques, the flavour, it's wild. Up next, Sharnay, Derek, Angie and Dee enter the Vegan Bake Challenge. But avoiding elimination is going to take more than just skill and hard work. Congratulations to our Episode 2 viewer winner, Berendina Balls, who walks away with her very own KitchenAid stand mixer for baking an apple custard tart inspired by her parents. Why not order from your oven? With precision, raise your standards and make it matter. AEG. Challenge the expected. Now, don't run into fear, means as what back is the pressure for scrickling work. My honest, I'm beaver, but I guess for scrickling anxious in a bit of a work now for me. Seeing the four bakes on the table, I'm surprised to be familiar with those bakes. So that definitely brought a sense of comfort. But knowing the taste master, there's definitely a slang and a grassy issue. Welcome back to the Taste Master Kitchen. Today you will be baking for your spot in the competition because after this challenge, one of you will be going home. So, here's how things are going to work. Each of you must veganize a classic South African bake. Sounds simple? Well, you know, things are never quite that simple in the Taste Master SA Kitchen because some of your bakes will also need to be gluten-free. To me, it's a vegan challenge every day, so it's nothing out of the box or a surprise, except for the gluten-free element, which has me a little bit worried. <laughs> and to determine exactly what you'll be baking, I'd like to welcome you officially to the very first Tastemaster SA baking auction. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> In this auction, your currency will not be money. It will be time. Each of you will have in your possession two hours worth of time. You will use 10 minute increments to bid on the vegan bike of your choice. The time that you spend is time that you lose during the challenge. I'm surprised at an auction, especially for the bakes. So this is definitely going to be an interesting one. We will start with a humble melt death, followed by a gluten-free Herzog. Then, gluten-free malfa pudding. And finally, a gluten-free chocolate fudge cake. The auction sounds stressful. I don't know who's going to be wanting what and how much I'm willing to fight for what I want. So, without wasting any time, let the auction begin. Melt that. And we'll start oh, with 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, 10 minutes. 10 minutes. I would like to bake a milk tart, but I need every single minute in that bake. 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 20 minutes. And it goes for 10 minutes to Derek. Well done, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty happy. It's only cost me 10 minutes and I get to bake what I wanted to bake. Next up, the gluten-free Herzogi. Do I have 10 minutes? Do I have 10 minutes? I've oh, got 10 minutes for D. Do I have 20 minutes? 20 minutes? 
20 minutes for Ange, do I have 30 minutes? Do I have 30 minutes? Think about it, going once. <laughs> 30 minutes for Didi, do I have 40 minutes? Do I have 40 minutes? Ooh, 40 minutes for Ange. Ooh. I want those hard sauces. And sold for 40 minutes for Ange. And next up is the gluten-free mulva pudding with custard. Do I have 10 minutes? Do I have 10 minutes for anybody? 10 minutes for D, do I have 20 minutes? Do I have 20 minutes? Chennai, do I have 20 minutes? And going once, going twice, and 10 minutes for D. Well done, D. We have the mulva pudding. Only 10 minutes of my time, I'm not stressed. This will mean, of course, Chennai, that you will have your full two hours to complete your gluten-free chocolate fudge cake. Well done, everybody. I feel very happy that I've chocolate cake, but this is from Egg Bio. Right, contestants, now that we know which vegan bake each of you will be recreating, we're ready to start the challenge. Chardonnay, you have your full two hours, you'll be starting first. 10 minutes later, Derek, D, you'll start. And 30 minutes after that, Ange, you can start with your gluten-free Erzogi. Your time starts in... Three, two, one. Let's bake more memories. I think I'm going to drink and have a hard clip and mal wees, but I hope for my planning is to do. I feel good to be able to begin. That gives me a little bit extra time, and I can make cooking work right set, and I can finish the cooking work as I get a little bit more back. Okay, so I can I can follow the bread in place of an egg, and now I'm going to add a little bit of sugar to it, and now I'm going to mix, and then I'm going to add some of my bestand yellow to it. My name is Shanae Marie, I'm from Port Elizabeth and I own my own bakery called Bake Delicious Cakes and Bakes. I'm a passionate baker and I'm a single mommy to my beautiful daughter Leah Ann. And I started my business because of my daughter and I wanted to show her any woman can excel in everything that you do if you put your mind to it. I decided to make a career of baking as that's something that I've always loved since I was a little girl. And it's the best decision I ever made because now I live my passion every day. I entered the Taste Master as I watched it religiously last season and I fell in love with the program and I said that would be an amazing opportunity and when it came around to the entries and I entered and I came in, I couldn't believe it. Food to me means love, that's how I give out my love and everything that you bake, you can taste the love in it when you eat it. I don't like people staring at me, <laughs> I feel under pressure. Staring with love. This is the first time that I make a vegan chocolate cook. Mark. Mark is confident that it's all work. I'm going to put cocoa in it, and I'm going to add some milk, and then I'm going to make a pan prep, and then I'm going to bake it. I don't feel too bad waiting because I'm only going to wait for 10 minutes versus Angelique, who's going to be waiting for 40 minutes. I'm left with 80 minutes thinking about my art sochi. I am just hoping and praying each element works out so that I'm left with enough time to also plate it pretty in the end. Dee and Derek, you may now begin your bake. You have an hour and 50 minutes. This sock belongs to my son, Zion. <laughs> and every day I call him and he says, I want my mommy. I don't want to be voted out and go home to see him. I want to stay here and make sure I do my best so that missing him can be worth something. Hi, I'm Dutan Lostoromani, otherwise known as D. I'm a French trained pastry chef and I run my home based bakery, A Baked Devotion. I've been baking from about the age of eight years old. My mother is the first person that taught me how to bake. She taught me how to make from a simple cupcake batter to a complex puff pastry. I love baking because it's a science. I'm quite a meticulous person and I love that I can do that while being creative at the same time. I entered the Tastemaster because I wanted to get out of my comfort zone. As somebody that works at home, I mostly interact with clients online. I don't interact with other people in the industry often, and I wanted to learn from other people, meet new people, and challenge myself in other ways. I begin first with the milk for the force of the milk tart. Um, I want all the spices to infuse at that time. So a bit of cinnamon in there, nutmeg, and some swimmel. I 
gebruik nie die um, loose springfoam mold vir die huis nie. So dit loof uit. Huh. Ek het nie verwacht dat ek gaan deur gaan. Rooting on the sidelines. Taste master cheerleader. <laughs> Angelique and Shanae and myself have formed an alliance. If anybody needs help, the plan is to help each other. Derek is not part of the alliance because he's a man. <laughs> so we're not saving him, only the girls. I see Shanae's hands trembling as she's cutting baking paper. I can see the pressure has gotten to her a little bit. I'm just stepping in, helping her put her baking paper in her pan so that she can get her sponges in the oven because that needs to cool. A friend in needs, a friend indeed. My time better be used for the good while I wait, so. This is my malva pudding batter. It has gluten-free flour, apricot jam, plant milk, bicarbonate of soda, royal baking powder. The royal baking powder is going to help leaven this malva pudding and that will help with the texture to make it spongy and soft. I don't know what it should look like. If it was a standard malva mix, I would know by the texture of the batter if something was going wrong. But I don't think I will know until I put it in the oven and it is baked. I'm busy doing my pastry shell for the milk tart. Luckily, I'm not doing gluten-free, so I'm using normal cake flour. And I'm using polenta. That's going to be sweetened with a little bit of coarser sugar. We have a, a flax seed powder with a bit of water. That represents an egg. Some raw baking powder is going in here and a little bit of bicarb. I've never baked anything vegan. And here I am with flax seed mixed with what what. Honestly, I feel very, very vulnerable. I might be going home today. How's it, Derek? Hi, hi, how can I be so? You go good. I can very well can melt that to be mock. Oh, I see you've got polenta in there. That's quite interesting. I do. I thought it might be a nice idea, a nice twist. But I do mix it with a bit of normal cake flour yeah. just to bind everything together. So I'm working this through to get a nice moldable doll. Okay. That's wonderful. Well, well done, eh? Seems Thank like you. you're doing good for time. Thank you, sir. I should have doubt. Ik heb een beetje meer chocolade om het van een geur. Oké, okay. dit is looperig dit. Dus dit is coconut cream. Dit is cream, ja. Dit is raag hoor. Okay. Dit is fijn dat het looperig is. Ik heb nog nooit vegan in een gemaakt. Ik maak het met coconut cream en met die vegan chocolade. En ik zit een beetje vanilla bij. Hallo, Shanae. Hallo. Ja, hoe is het? Ik ben wel, dank je. Ja, ik ben goed aan de kant van de tafel. Je cake is al redelijk baking. Het is baking. Je doet het heel goed voor tijd. Ja. Hoe ga je dat optimaliseren om jezelf een edge te geven vandaag? Ik wil een mooie chocolade maken. En ik ben bezig met mijn ganache nu. Ja, ik ga het heel mooi doen. Ange, de tijd is al gekomen. Je mag beginnen. Ik ga het heel goed doen. Ik ga het heel goed doen. Ik ga This is Angie's territory, mm -hmm. so the expectation is high there. Yeah. But there is a spanner in the works for her, gluten-free, so let's see how she navigates that. I think I am prepared enough. I'm just taking it calm and focusing on my different elements. I'm making sure my spices are there, everything that needs to be there today to punch in a lot of flavor, but also with a little bit of pizzazz. This is my fiance. He's rooting for me from home. The only person I really want to make proud out of all of this, and I think I already have just by being myself. So, moral support there. Voel rustig. Ik wil nog een caramel maak voor in de middel van die koek. So ik ga net die rieke weer transferen en dan ga ik beginnen met mijn caramel. Ik is happy. Ik hoop het smaak raakt. Het is niet te hard of iets nee. Who knows? We shall see. When you reduce aquafaba, it also just helps to isolate those proteins. And because I'm making a meringue for my harsoki, I want it to be as stable as what it possibly can and possibly do something fancy on top. This mava is looking like a disaster. Every time I peek, it's bubbling over the ramekins. I don't know what's going on. After losing 40 minutes in the recipe auction, will Angie's experience in vegan baking save her from elimination? Stay tuned to find out.
With Salati, there's so many ways to sprinkle joy in your kitchen. I'm making my tahini anglaise to go with my malwa pudding. It tastes nice. <laughs> I'm surprised. <laughs> I've got my soy milk with the cinnamon and nutmeg in there and it's sweet but not too sweet. Now I need to thicken it and usually you would use eggs but um, I need to use cornstarch. It's beautiful. I hope that the cook is ready. I like it moist and I'm going to put it in the freezer so that it can cool. It looks for me a bit different than my normal cook. Oh, oh. I'm going patch, I'm going find this. <laughs> I'm doing the best that I could today with the knowledge that I have on gluten-free baking and just crossing fingers that when I pull out those hard sochi cases that they are going to be what I'm looking for. Been in the oven for 15 minutes and just wanted to take it out and check it and see if everything is okay. It might go back in for another two minutes. It's very rustic, but... Um... Onder of die polenta te hard is. Ek het erg gedink polenta gaan bietjie sagter reageer as dit. As I take the marble out of the oven, it sinks in the center. It's looking like a mess. I think I need to redo this. Ek dink hy is net traag. Ek hoop hy sê dat hy nie oor oorstuif is nie, maar dat hy net net sy vorm hou. Ek is happy. I just need it to cool down a little bit so I can add some vanilla and then it's going to go into my crust show. Contestants, this is your one hour call. You have an hour left of baking to do. Come on guys, let's see those vegan bakes. Let's go guys. It's not an easy feat. I'm just giving it my best shot today and if you don't challenge yourself, you can never grow. So. I'm just taking it as things come. The base that I'm doing is desiccated coconut and uh, almond flour okay. with coconut oil and maple syrup for the sweetener. So you're making your own jam filling? I am not making my own jam filling, mm. but I have a couple of tricks up my sleeve okay. today. Okay, don't tell us anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's Good a luck. surprise. Good Thank luck. you okay, so much. All the best. Thank you. I am not making my own jam today, especially with the time that I have left. I decided to go the route from the master class and use apricot jam. With Miltard, you can decide to either bake it or you can do a Miltard that's set. I chose one to set because it takes less time. I don't know why, but I'm always concerned about time. Ooh, everything going according to plan? Um, I don't know about this Marvel pudding, but mm. everything else, yes. What did you substitute for traditionally what you'd use as eggs for your Malva? I don't know, I don't want to answer that question. Zola asked me what I used as an egg replacement for my vegan malva pudding. And that made me realize that I didn't replace the eggs. I've got 46 minutes left on the clock and I'm starting this from scratch. Please work. It's very wobbly. It jiggles like a waterbed. Uh, I'm a bit worried. Die laatste twee koeken het langer gevat om uit te komen en dat geeft me verschrikkelijk stress en die tijd loopt en ik is bang dat ik hier van genoeg koud niet. My hot sochi base is in the oven. I'm busy with one of my decor elements and I hope to have a little bit of time spare to plate it nicely. I'm starting this from scratch. Initially, I had only used the gluten-free flour, but I'm going to substitute some of that with buckwheat flour to help with the structure. I'm also going to make a flax egg using ground flax seed and water, and I'm going to mix that into my wet ingredients and then into the dry ingredients. I don't know if that will work. I'm just hoping, I'm hoping right now. I'm about to take the hard sochi bases out of the oven and I'm just hoping that they have baked nicely and that when I'm ready to pop them out, that they'll come out in one piece. My chocolate cigars have not worked. 
ik gebruik gewoon een bench scraper en ik heb een palette knife gebruikt so dat het niet zo so perfect uitgekomen is gevoel ik hier. Zo ik ga nou niet chocolate charts maken. I haven't tried sponge sugar before, so it's something new to me. But I think it's going to look really nice on the plate and add just a little something special to bring it all together in the end. Derek. Wat maak je broer? Ik raak angstig als ik in een competitietijd zie iemand staan stil. Vertel me, wat gaan we? Mijn uh, meltaart is in die ijskast bezig om te zet, maar het is niet een gebakte meltaart. Nie. Dus wil je kunnen kijken? Sure. Kom eens bij jou. Net een seconde. Oké, okay. ik zoek het. Maak het. Oké. Okay. Oké. Okay. Een <laughs> tweel is een decor that we use in patisserie. The one that I'm making uses oil, flour, and water. And corrected my ratio <laughs> for the coral wheel. <laughs> and yeah, let's see how it turns out. Because it's gluten-free flour once again. I'm a bit worried that if I push them from the bottom, they're gonna crack. So I need to give them a little bit of time to cool and then just loosen them up. And hopefully <laughs> there's no crackage as I <laughs> push them out. There's not much I can do about anything at this point, so I just have to wait and take that milk tart out as late as possible, give it as much chance in the, in the freezer. The freezer is actually too blij. Um, the thing is set and I, it's still very wobbly. Um, I can buy a comet actually. With these AEG fridges, I am so happy that they are there. Cooling down our bakes, whether you need the fridge or the freezer, it literally is a lifesaver. Contestants, you now have 30 minutes to go. Die koek wat voor mij staan, ek is nie verskrikkelijk trots daarop nie. Dit is nie my kwaliteit werk nie. Ek gaan nou uit die ganache uit roose maak. Pipe trousers. Die nozzle wat ek het is te klein, is nie wat ek aan gewoond is nie. So dit werk nie. Ek moet nog hierdie koek versier en die tyd daar klop uit. Ek is bezig om my mabels te verloor. My marble pudding is still in the oven. However, my sauce for the marble pudding is done and my creme anglaise is done, so I'm not panicking. I still need to get my filling in my hard sochi and put it in the oven, bake it, and just hope nothing goes wrong because at this point, there's not much time to fix anything. I'm doing a little bit of a test um, on my cake stand with uh, ground cinnamon. I just painted the cake stand with a bit of lemon juice and made a stencil with a doily. And that worked like a charm. Well, it looked pretty good. I'm very happy with what's in front of me right now. I'm feeling good about this elimination round. Time's up. I need to get this milk tart out of the fridge. I definitely have to get this milk tart out of the fridge. This could be disastrous. Well, next will be eight knees. <laughs> There's a vegan milk tart. I did it. When I take my hatsuki out of the oven, I see that the meringue hasn't reacted the way that I thought. It definitely collapsed a little bit, and I don't think I put enough coconut in it. I decide that I'm going to give it a little bit of a blowtorch just to add a little bit of color to it and I think that at least will look nice on the plate. I can a cook for here in Swiss three minutes. I can it probeer op TikTok. <laughs> en ek het dit suksesvol reg gekry. Maar die cook ek sit net daai ganache op en ek sit die tweede laag op en ek ganache daai cook so vinnig as dit ek kan en dit is nie wat ek wil hê nie, maar ek moet die bord klaar kry. Dit gaan uit oor 'n paar minute. Your time ends in 5 4 3 2 1 Time's up, everybody. Stop baking. Well done. Well done. Woo! Gluten-free is not my forte, so I'm glad that I picked something that could challenge myself and also teach me something new um, while I'm in the Taste Master kitchen. This is not my decorating standard, as I'm a cake decorator. 
I'm concerned because I don't think this start is set completely. I feel like myself helped. Good luck, it smells like my son. Will that close reminder of her son help Dee avoid elimination? Join us after the break as the judges taste the classic vegan bakes. Who will influence the nation with their creative bakes? Bake more memories with tried and trusted Royal Baking Powder. Well, judges, that's the vegan bake done and dusted. How do you feel it went? I was quite surprised by how much some of the contestants struggled. But of course, I was also impressed by how some of them also saved the bake. What's really interesting is that the person, Shone, who had the most time was the one who struggled the most at the end. Mm -hmm. Well, in line with that, we said this is Angie's platform. And I think she had surprising setbacks today on things that she counted on doing well. Mm. Maybe it didn't go so well today. So mm. we'll see an interesting offering today. <laughs> on that note, let's bring on the first bake. As I'm walking to the judges, I'm just hoping that I don't disappoint Nondumisu with the hard sohi as that was what we learned in her master class. I just wanted to ask you a little bit about your base. Why did you make that particular choice? I just try to figure out what could work, what flavors could work, and that is why I chose the almond and the coconut today. Did you end up making your own jam or did you use a ready-bought jam? I just used the apricot jam that was provided. Okay, thank okay. you, Ange. We're very excited to taste your hat, Sochi. I'm asking myself, how close is this to a real traditional Herzogi? Clearly her meringue didn't work out the way that she'd intended, but I think putting the coconut into it obviously made it fall and it didn't have the volume she wanted. But because she'd put coconut in the base, was it necessary to double up on the coconut like that? She could have had beautiful height. I think I would have been excited to see her play around a bit more with the base and maybe make a base that actually really does mimic the base of a traditional Herzog. I think she took the safe route by making this coconut base. I would have liked her to have used the type of flour that would have given the base a bit of a softer mm. short crust short pastry. Crust pastry yeah. So this, to me, the base is quite disappointing. I just can't get over the fact that one very important component in this dessert is not made by her. I believe we're on the same page regarding the jam. I think when you make it for a Herzogi, it's not a sandwich jam that we're talking about. We're talking about an apricot filling with a lot of texture and depth of flavor. And all three components for me in this specific bake is lacking in one way or another. Should we move on to the next one? Let's. I don't think it's gonna work. I've resigned myself to the fact that I'm being eliminated. Ooh, oh, fancy. Is it set? It is not set. It is a very wobbly, jiggly tart. Um, the polenta also did not behave the way that I expected it to. Did you consider maybe using agar agar to give it a bit of structure? I've never worked with it. I've never baked anything vegan in my life. The only vegan thing I made was once I think I made a green papaya salad. Oh. But it wasn't a salad challenge. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> okay, well, thank you, Derek. Thank we'll you, Derek. we'll give well, your tart well. a try. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. Uh, is it gonna hold? Is it gonna hold? Holding, oh, baby. it's a holding. Yeah. I like the filling. The crust is a bit too dry. And I think he shot himself in the foot by using polenta. I, I'm not sure why he made that choice. Very unpleasant to eat because it's still, it's still hard, you know? Yeah. Polenta, you need to hydrate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it still tastes very raw and very dry. I think that what is pleasant is the flavor of the cinnamon and the nutmeg. Yeah. That's lovely. Mm -hmm. Not terrible. No, not a bad attempt for somebody who's only ever made a yeah. salad that's vegan. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Right, let's bring on the next one. Oh, that let all is not like a brood. It must not be as soon as I could envision in my cup the smoke the most. Is there anything interesting about the way you bake the sponge? Yes, what I did was I used aquafaba and I used the coconut milk. I did use the vegan ingredients and it was gluten-free flour as well. Well, I commend you for um, tempering chocolate. I mean, you made chocolate curls and beautiful decorations. The decoration with the shards, I feel that I need to stand out more, so it's standing up. Thank you, Shanae. We're going to dig in. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's very sticky. 
either it's underbaked, which I suspect it is, or she just didn't add enough of the gluten-free flour. Yeah. But it definitely does not ring true to being a cake. I'm a bit disappointed that most of the contestants today seem to not have thought about the principles that we spoke about at the masterclass, which is that when you do gluten-free baking, you do have to be very cognizant of the types of flour that you use. So you see the misunderstanding of how gluten-free flour works come mm -hmm. through in some of the bakes that we are tasting today. But having said that, the texture obviously is not good, but the flavor of the, you know, the ganache mm. and the, the chocolate flavor in the, what was meant to be a sponge is actually really great. I mean, it's a rich, uh, deep chocolate flavor, which is a tick. My brief was to make a gluten-free vegan marble pudding with a custard. I ticked all three of those boxes. Dee, yes. I was quite impressed with your performance today. Do you want to take us through any mishaps you might have experienced today and how you recovered from them? My first batch of marble pudding did not bake like this. Zola came and mentioned about a binder, an egg replacement, so I tossed those ones out and made a second batch and made a flax egg. Well, I'm glad you decided to bake another round. <laughs> well, we're very excited. Thank you, Dee, this looks great. Well done on the second attempt. It definitely has that comforting look and feel of Melva pudding, traditional Melva pudding. Shall we? Yeah, let's. For me, I think it's it's light, which mm -hmm. is great. Mm -hmm. Often, you know, when you're baking gluten-free, it has a tendency to be very dense. So I think she got the texture right. What I wish she'd done is soaked it a bit more. It yeah. needs, you know how marvel pudding is soaked in that syrup? Yeah. She should have poked holes in it and actually let it soak in. That would have made a huge difference. This is great gluten-free baking. It is. I'm impressed with the fact that it came together as it did because mm -hmm. the first attempt really didn't look that good. So I'm impressed with how it turned out mm -hmm. overall. And the tahini spin, I'm not mad at it. Mm. I'm not mad at it. Mm. I quite like it. Mm. She did a good job. She, she did. did a decent she job. Did. Yeah. She did a decent job. She did. And for the folks at home, we're giving away 12 KitchenAid stand mixes. One every week. So you've seen what our bikers can do. If you can do the same or even better, Bake your best vegan bake using Royal Baking Powder. Upload it onto socials using the hashtag TheTasteMasterSA and you could win your very own to bake some more memories at home. Happy baking! After mixed reviews from the judges, who will be going home in the Vegan Bake Challenge? That's next. Today was a very tough challenge, especially since you had to auction off your time. I'd like to take a moment to say a big thank you to Non Dumiso for imparting so much knowledge on vegan and gluten-free baking. Thank you so much. It was an absolute pleasure to meet and work with you. I think you all are so brilliant. I just want you to keep in mind at all times that vegan gluten-free baking is a growing area. And so it is important for all of you as aspiring taste masters to familiarize yourself with the principles of vegan baking, particularly gluten-free baking, because we saw today that, you know, there were some challenges that you ran into. However, there was a standout bake today. D, congratulations. Your gluten-free vegan malva pudding was delicious. Well done. Thank you. All I can say is I'm a woman of many talents. Now I can add vegan baking to it. Derek, you were concerned, as we were, whether your milk tart would be set. As soon as Fritz cut into it, we were pleasantly surprised. It held. You're joking. <laughs> it held. <laughs> and the flavor of your filling was really tasty. You found a great balance between the cinnamon and the nutmeg. So well done. You are safe from elimination. Oh. <laughs> I, I can't believe it. I feel like this must have been some sort of divine intervention. I can't believe I'm still in the competition. I didn't expect that. 
Sharnai, Ange, please take a step forward. Sharnai, you took your entire two hours. When you presented your bike, there were definitely beautiful features, which I thought was very well thought out. But I think your misunderstanding of the gluten-free flowers disappointed you today. More to learn there. Ange, you opted for the Herzogi, one of the simpler bikes of the day. Your base, you went conservative. It was the overuse of coconut. Your meringue topping was unfortunate. It was disappointing for you as well as for us. And when it comes to the jam, you opted to take a ready-made jam. In this competition, we believe everything needs to be made from scratch. I have to stress that the Tastemaster essay is a baking competition. When we give you a bake to make, we expect you to tick all the boxes when it comes to that bake. As a result, the person going home today who didn't tick all those boxes is Ange. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I've made myself proud as a home baker to stand next to people so skilled. I couldn't ask for more and the fact that veganism got time to shine, it's so close to my heart and that just honestly made my day today. Thank you guys Thank so, you. so much. Thank you. Thank you guys. This is something I never thought in a million years that I would even do and I'm glad that I was brave enough to even attempt this. So. Just overall, grateful, proud, sad. <laughs> it's fine before you cried. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. You, you may leave the kitchen. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you, guys. I can save. It's a miracle of the air. I can't even wait. I can't be happy to be here longer to be here. And for the rest of you, We'll see you back in the Tastemaster kitchen next week for a particularly sweet challenge. It's the top nine now, and now is where the real competition begins. I'm going to work to remain on this winning streak. I'm not sure what the judges are going to cook up, but the heat is getting intense. Next Friday on the Tastemaster SA, our nine remaining contestants take on a challenge that will test their technical skill to the limit as they inch closer to the title and a grand prize of 50,000 rands in cash from Royal Baking Powder, 82,000 rands worth of Kitchen 8 products, 50,000 rands worth of AEG appliances, plus the opportunity to be the face of future SABC cooking shows. Join us again next Friday at 7. Repeat Sundays at 3 on SABC2. Another feel-good production.